Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. In today's video, I'm going to look at the disastrous tale that is Foslock Environmental Technologies. This company at one point in time, particularly in 2019, the start of 2019, was a market darling. The share price took off, uh, exponential rise in share price, and in fact, the valuation of this company reached $850 million at one point in time. I think it was Ju July 2019. But some bad things have happened to this company over the past two years. In fact, this company uh, was in a suspended state for almost two years. So the company stopped trading the shares in September 2020, and they began trading again on September 16, uh, 2022. And we saw the share price, or this company saw the share price drop about 65% on that day. And on the 19th of September, uh, dropped another 25%. Now, why was the market absolutely excited about this company? Uh, putting a valuation of $850 million attached to Foslock. And the main reason why the market was really excited about this company was simply because of what they were doing. This company is all about the treatment and remediation of water, particularly when it comes to excessive levels in phosphorus, which is a big problem throughout the world. And they do have a product called Foslock, which was developed by CSIRO. So if any sort of product is developed by CSIRO, more than likely it's going to be a good product. And what this uh, Foslock product does, it uh, binds phosphorus and enables it to settle in environmentally benign state. So this company was gaining traction during 2018 and 19. We'll look at the revenue growth of this company, I think in the next slide, but this company was gaining a lot of traction, uh, not only in Australia, overseas, but particularly in China. And they were gaining a lot of contracts. Revenue was increasing. Uh, this company had become operating cash flow positive. But then bad things started to happen. I'll touch upon those bad things during this video. Talk about why this company was in a suspended state for two years. And then when it come out of that suspension, the share price absolutely took a dive. In fact, the share price has dropped from a high of $1.60 to $0.06. Cents over the past few years. And this was include not including that two years where the company shares were not traded at all. And Foslock was a market darling for a while, particularly during 2018 and 2019. Well, have a, have a look at the chart. Share price of this company was exponentially rising. In fact, it re rose to a high of $1.60, which gave a market of this company a total of 850 million, which does seem fairly high, but that just shows you how much hype there was in this company. And when you look at the revenue growth for Foslock, particularly from 2017 into 2019, a revenue actually grew from the low $1 million range all the way up to a high nearly $20 million. And the company was actually operating cash flow positive in 2019 by $7.6 million. So what exactly has happened to this company over the past few years, which has seen the share price fall from $1.60 all the way down to $0.06, cents, and the shares in this company were not traded for almost two years? Now, this is the weekly chart for Foslock going back to July 2019, when the share price did reach that high of $1.60. And before the company went into suspension, you can see the share price actually dropping. So even though the market was really in love with this company, from the end of 2018 into start and middle of 2019, the market was falling out of love with this company and the trend of share price was definitely down. So I do want to treat this company a little bit different than other companies, particularly high quality companies. I would not call Foslock a high quality company. And for low quality companies, it's all about the trend in the share price and sentiment. And from about July or middle of 2019, all the way through to the middle of 2020, there was a lot of negative sentiment before this company went into suspension. So if you just focused on that negative sentiment, you probably wouldn't have been holding these company shares in your portfolio because the share price actually did drop from $1.60 to about 20 cents. And then on the 17th of September, 2020, the company went into a trading halt. And then on the 21st of September, they mentioned why they went into a trading halt. So this was all about China accounting irregularities, irregularities and audit investigation ongoing. So straight away, that does not sound good, particularly because it has to do with their business in China, which was seemingly doing fairly well at this point in time. And this is the whole reason why this company was in the suspension for about two years because of fraudulent activities in their China business.
And then on the 8th of October 2020, we got further insight into what was happening in China. And this was all about border activity. So in the initial announcement in September, they didn't, I don't remember if they did mention it being fraudulent, but in this announcement, they went on to that fraudulent narrative. Fraudulent activity had been identified, including false accounting and falsification of invoices and service contracts where FOSLAC Environmental Technologies or its subsidiaries are the recipient and potential improper tax reporting and misappropriation of funds. Several China-based employees have been either stood down or terminated in relation to these matters. Uh, it has also been confirmed that several previously undisclosed related party transactions have taken place. And then they also mentioned how long they expected, well, not how long, but the very fact that they were going to remain in a suspended state until such time as investigations are complete, the financial and accounting impact has been assessed, and the audit accounts for the half year have been released. So they remain in a suspended state for almost two years. Now, the problem with this, and this is one of the reasons why I was not interested in taking a position in FOSLOC, is simply because of their China business. Now, back in 2015 through to 2017, quite a few China-based companies listed on the ASX. And the majority, if not every single one of those companies, is no longer trading on the ASX. And quite a few of those companies were fraudulent companies. So you always have to be a little bit wary. And this is unfortunate that if any company is based out of China, there is that potential of corruption and fraudulent activities in those businesses. And one of the reasons behind that, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, is that the Chinese government is acting like a spoiled brat. And because they're acting like a spoiled brat and they think they can get away with everything, they think China, the whole, the rest of the world should be bending down to them. And if the rest of the world doesn't bend down to them, they will really ramp up that spoiled brat narrative. And because they are acting like that, that really sort of impacts how their citizens are acting. So that's the reason why a lot of Chinese companies are really fraudulent and you have to be wary, particularly if they are listing on international exchanges. So at this point in time, I'm always wary about Chinese-based companies. I'm also very wary of any Australian companies trying to move into China, uh, trying to uh, you know, get into that narrative about an increasing middle class over there, trying to get more money, more revenue, more profits. We have seen problems with companies doing that over the past few years. So just be very wary about companies that are moving into China and hoping to take advantage of that uh, increasing middle class in China. Now, when FOSLOC uh, went into that suspension, and because of the reasons why they went into suspension, I was actually following the story for a period of time, and then I lost interest in FOSLOC about a year ago, until they released this announcement on the 11th of July, 2022, in, rega in regards to the clear map roadmap provided for the reestatement of FOSLOC shares on the ASX. And this is important because if a company remains in a suspension for over two years, there is an increasing chance they're going to be delisted. This has happened to quite a few companies who remain in a suspension for a long period of time, and then the ISS just sort of gives up on them and just delists them. So it looks like the management of FOSLOC wanted to correct all these issues. And there were a few conditions that they had to fulfill before they were allowed to uh, get their shares traded back on the ASX. And one of those reasons was not being subject to a disclaimer of opinion or qualified opinion. What does that mean? Well, in the event that the audit, an auditor is unable to complete the audit report due to the absence of financial records or insufficient cooperation from management, the auditor issues a disclaimer of opinion. This is an indication that no opinion of the financial statements was able to be determined. So they go through the rest of the details in regards to that key condition. And there was also some other key conditions set down by the ASX, including the provision by the company to shareholders of an update to the past fraud and mismanagement issues that have impacted FOSLOC, including full disclosure of any known ongoing investigations. So this was released on the 11th of July. And then I forgot about the company again. And then, of course, they satisfied these key conditions on the 16th of September. And that's why the company shared started trading again. And then on the 16th of September, the company released two announcements. 
And the first announcements was this one uh, in regards to the restatement of the trading of Foslock shares on the ASX. And the other announcement was the more important announcement because that was talking about all the issues or the, satisfact or the satisfaction of those conditions laid down by the ASX. And it's a really interesting reading because they have been in discussion with the Australian Federal Police and also ASICS. So it looks like all these um, investigations are still ongoing. A lot of legal issues still at play with Foslock moving forward. And that's one of the reasons why the shares absolutely tanked when they started trading again on the 16th of September. And here is the trading history for Foslock. And this is only including the last two days of trading, not going all the way back to 2020. So the shares actually dropped 67% on the 16th of September and then dropped another 25% uh, on the 19th of September and finished on the, I think it was the 20th September at six cents. So the shares in this company have dropped from $1.60 at the high in 2019 to six cents now. And just before they went, or just when they went into that suspension, the shares for this company were around about 25 cents. So uh, even with coming out of suspension, the shares of this company have dropped over 75% in two trading days. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the market cap history of Foslock. Um, this goes back to the end of 2017, when the market cap of this company was around $75 million. And you can just see from about 2017 to sort of around about April 2019, the market cap of this company was slowly climbing. It rose from $75 million to just over $200 million. And then during the middle part of 2019, the market cap of Foslock climbed rose from 200 million to 850 million. So exponential rise in the valuation and the share price for this company. And I've mentioned this quite a few times in videos. Whenever I see the share price or the valuation of the company rise exponentially, I do become wary because that is telling us there's a little bit too much hype in the company. And usually you will see some profit taking and that profit taking would put some pressure on the share price and the value of the company. And that's exactly what has happened with Foslock. You can just see an exponential rise in the share price and value, and then a dramatic fall in the valuation of this company over one year period. And the share price during that one year period was in a well-defined downtrend. So again, because I would classify Foslock as a low quality company, sentiment and the share price trend is really important to whether I'm holding the company or not. So shareholders during that one year period from July 2019 to September 2020 had enough time to sell their shares out of this company because the share price dropped from $1.60 to a low of $0.20 cents during that period. And then the shares went into a suspended state for nearly two years. That's all I have for this uh, look at Foslock Environmental Technologies, a disastrous tale of a company with so much promise. Unfortunately, some fraudulent activities in their Chinese business has seen a significant downfall in this company. Now, the share price has decreased, as I've mentioned, from $1.60 to $0.06. Cents. There could be some potential moving forward for this company if they can get over all these potential legal issues moving forward, because they do have a fairly you know, really good product that was developed by CSIRO. And with the treatment and remediation of water uh, in regards to uh, excessive levels of phosphorus, I think that will be an increasing issue in the world over the next few decades. So they have the potential, if they get out of this mess, to be a company that would have to be put onto your watch list just because of the technology they have. Now, there is significant risks moving forward with this company just because of what they've been going through over the last few years. And no one likes any sort of fraudulent activity in a company. So I think it's going to take time before the market becomes less wary about this company. And Foslock and their management will have to show they've overcome this issue. We're going to have to see an increasing revenue in this company over time. It would be great if this company became operating cash flow, free cash flow positive again. And I think if the company can show us that, that would be the time to get interested in this company. So even though this company has gone through uh, wars, uh, horror, horror stories over the past few years, doesn't mean that it is the end of this company simply because of the product they do have. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any uh, opinion about Foslock and this disastrous tale, I'd love to hear it. So leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, 
I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.